Welcome to the community, my name's Rilovich, and today I will make you a Power World expert within this one YouTube video. With over 100 Power World videos and much more to come, I am just the guy for this gig. I will cover every POW in today's video and rank them based on an average of their elements and drops, their passive skill and backstory, and instead of getting all technical with the stats, I'm gonna rank them on how they handle a battle as well as how difficult it is to catch them without breeding. And last but most important, their work suitability rank. I will be cramming so much information in today's video, so let's go ahead and jump right in. First off, we got Lamb Ball, the cute critter everybody sees early game. And I can tell you right now that elements and drops are not going to hold much weight in the tier list, but all other factors are going to hold extreme weight for the ranking. This right here is going to be the elemental chart. The reason we're not taking element into too much consideration with this tier list is because all elements have a counter, something they're strong against, something they're weak against. The one thing I will take into consideration is the fact that neutral absolutely sucks. A walk up a hill tends to end with a pal tumbling back down. This causes it to become dizzy and unable to move, making it easy to capture and kill. To me, alcoholic. No. <laughs> this was one of the first pals that I captured in game, so it has to have some browning points because of that. Its partner skill is when activated, it becomes a shield. Absolutely horrendous. I would not recommend anybody do that at all. Its work suit abilities, besides the wool it gives you when adding to the farm, you need that maybe some early game for some beds. It's not too useful. One thing to consider is the fact that the lamb ball mutton does drop from it, and any critters that drop a meat have some aspect of value to them with all things considered i think this bad boy is gonna go up on the tier list on a solid is debatably a c i think it's a d not too difficult to catch or anything so it definitely can go into the d section it ain't the worst of the worst though coming in next we got catavina a catavina in many ways is one of the biggest disgraces Hmm, that gives me flashbacks. While in the team, it can help you carry supplies. Because of its partner skill, I can already tell you it's gonna have some stronger value than Lambo. It also is a great miner early game. As far as drops, completely useless. So I think I'll give it one little tier up, a little C rank has a little punch to it as well. Chicken, extremely weak and far too delicious, really sums it up. You can get the eggs and you need those for cake, so it has some sensibility to it. It also gives you poultry. It is a valuable minion, but it has no other stats on it whatsoever. I'm gonna put it right here with the cat. No, it's not as valuable as the cat because weight is so valuable. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a D rank as well. Hmm, is Lamb Ball an F? We might end up changing some of this around. I'm debating it. We gotta leave some room up top, and there's no way. I mean, we can move all these up one if needed later on, but there's no way that this chicken and Lamb Ball are on the same tier. Coming in next, we got that Life Monk, a number four, and it makes a wonderful partnership, but have been more than few cases where they've killed their master after learning to use weapons. Very demonic. You can see the look in his eyes. If I didn't, if I put this guy in the F category, I'm pretty sure I'd wake up with him around. Partner skill, when activated, leaps onto a player's head and uses the submachine gun. Absolutely gorgeous, but I did not use that much early game. I'm pretty sure it's a fire ability though. And in the base, it has that good mix that you need early game, so it was used a decent amount. I'll give it that ranking right there. Going in with that box bark. Partner skill, when activated, equips to a player and transforms into a flamethrower or really flashy partner skill not that useful whatsoever really flashy minion not that useful whatsoever even the backstory it is unskilled at controlling its fire from the moment it's born beautiful minion early game beautiful to catch but it really doesn't add too much besides the kindling aspect that's probably going to be as valuable as the chicken is it more valuable than the chicken definitely not is it as weak as a lamb ball no because it's actually decent in battle we got that flack this guy's one of my favorites early game you need him for the water and you always got him in the base and you're hunting them for those pal fluids pal fluids are extremely rare or they were before the kelpsy update at least i guess now it isn't as important wax body surfs towards an enemy and slams into him it's partner skilled never used it myself but it's definitely a cool one 
less useful than the chicken, more useful than the fox sparks. Working in on the D tier list right now. Hopefully we get some better minions. Spark it. Very good minion considering how hard it is to get electric organs. Its partner skill is Y in the team increases the attack power of electric pals. Nothing too crazy. Beginner minion. It's debatably an F, but the electric organ does hold value. I'm gonna put it right here behind fox sparks. It's definitely not used in battle. I can tell you that little critter is not for that. We got Tazni, absolutely cute minion right there. <laughs> the partner skill, I will admit, was extremely flashy. When we unlocked it, we were excited like no other. And then he didn't shoot a single thing with the assault rifle we gave him. That's already gonna move him deep low on the list. His abilities though are beautiful. I was a big fan of him early game, does not live up to his name late game. More useful than debatably all those though. The chicken's so high up on the list, even though I didn't catch much of them. I just have so much respect for the chicken. That Ruby, one of the minions that's meant for early game, but if you spawn on the south part of the map, you don't see too much of it till you get to the northern part of the map and a little bit more towards the middle game. Beautiful minion was not used for any combat so not nearly as good as fox sparks though with the same exact stats i'm gonna go ahead and put it right there it's debatably worse electric organ dude we got right here honestly i'm gonna go ahead and move him up i'm feeling that it's on the list we got the beautiful pingalette and i was very confident in this minion i loved him especially for how cute it is partner skill when activated the player equips a rocket launcher and fires pinguinette as ammunition i've never used that but i definitely am tempted to now that i've seen it Really curious what the damage is on that, but I must say, even a level 50 Penguin that dies to just a couple bullets, so there's no way it's good. It's just too early of a game minion. The cooling really comes in handy early game though if you end up doing the whole fridge thing. I didn't do the fridge because I produced more than enough food for the situation at hand, so I would go ahead and put them right here. I'm really not val valuing fire enough in my opinion. Put it right there. Because that early game fire, there's only a few minions that could do it. And you gotta cook stuff, so there's some value to the Fox Sparks. Our first Alpha Pal minion, you can also catch them regular on the Sanctuary Island. Heck King, unrelated to Pingolit. I had no idea about that. Partner skill, while fighting together, Fire Pals drop more items when defeated. This is what I used tried to use to get the golden schematics off the blazemoth fire minion but i really did not see that much of a difference it is better than hinglet because of the fact of the mining though and it has level two in all the categories finally a somewhat decent minion it's good for combat it's better than catavania yeah this is why we made room up top i definitely think it's going to be the first b tier jolt hog it's a cute little guy he does not do much for the base if you're using this you're down bad his passive you can hold him it's just like the flamethrower really flashy nothing too crazy here really crazy backstory as if this guy is electrocute and everything but i can tell you that is not the case same with the jolt hog chris i would usually debate that the jolt hog chris or the chris are better but in this case you lose electricity for one cooling and that is not better in any what situation regular jolt hog going on the end here way below everything oh it might even be this low but it's a better than a land ball and the cooling one is going to be last on the list for right now absolutely horrendous minions gum o's <laughs> i butchered that one a strain pal whose body resembles tree sap while in the team approves the efficiency of cutting trees i had no idea about that i totally would have used that early game and that's why you're watching this video right now because now you'll know to toss this on your team whenever you're chopping trees i didn't even think about that they do not show the partner skills well at all in this game no good abilities besides that but i will put it in the d tier list because of that ability that i didn't even know about it's debatably right here right here really good spot for it honestly vixie vixie is needed for the early game 100 percent when you put it in the ranch it digs up pal balls which are hard as a mess to create until you get a huge surplus of the supplies so vixie needed required early game but not worthy in battle and used for possibly nothing else mediocre backstory all right never mind great backstory <laughs> great mind great mind sorry for the bad rank we're gonna move on now who crates often lost in thought and it's sometimes found difficult to sleep i don't think it ever sleeps in this game and it only comes out at night that's facts 
While on the team increases the power of your dark pals. Find this interesting that a possible drop is a high grade technician manual. That is honestly something good to farm because of that. Besides that and the fact that it increases your dark pals if you want an all dark team, it has no use whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the D ranks as well. Ow oh, man, it's at the bottom of D. It has to be. At T Fent next, partner skill, soothing shower. When activated, it spurts mysterious water that soothes wounds and restores the player's health. I did not even know about that. These are ridiculously revealing. That would come in so clutch in that early game build where you got a little bit of health going. The watering one being horrendous though definitely is going to put it low on the tier list. Our D is getting absolutely overfilled. There have got to be some minions that go higher up. That healing ability is kind of cool. I'm going to put it right there. Good old Depresso. He makes you smile so much. For some reason, he is the beauty of the early game. When activated, Depresso drinks a massive amounts of energy drinks, causing its movement speed to increase. Partner skill that I've never used again, but pretty cool, I guess. I will admit that making a Depresso go faster is still not very fast. It has few friends because of its grouchiness. Sometimes Steve feeding Vixie, who have strayed from their pack. Oh wow, it got a crush on Vixie. They really got some some lore going on in this. <laughs> It's got a mining, so you do end up using it early game, so it's not nearly as bad. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm probably giving this too much respect, but the cuteness appeal definitely gets it up on the list. Yeah, right there, right there. Good spot. All right, moving on next, we got Kremis, and this is why we don't really use Lamb Ball much, is because you just put this in the farm for wool i guess you could use either or so it's gonna go right next to the lamb ball it's basically the same exact thing as lamb ball if you ask me i do not see much of a difference besides it came from an ev so we're gonna go ahead and just set that right next to it i find lamb ball better because he's a shield so it'll be above daydream now this is gonna be debatably controversial it puts those it is interested in to sleep and shows them an endless stream of happy dreams that's kind of cool don't get me wrong what everybody loves about this minion is the fact that when it's in the team, it appears near the player and follows the player's attack with magic bullets. So I did not know that it follows the attack with magic bullets. I thought it attacked at all times and you had a pal that you couldn't control out. Because of the fact that it attacks with magic bullets whenever you're shooting or doing whatever, I think that's cool. But if it's just wildly attacking, it is a problem for catching pals. I will say this was lower on the chart before the Ring of Mercy came out and the passive ability Mercy that you could put on this minion. I am not the kind of guy to get four of them along with a Hoops Kratz and put that on the team. That is not my kind of style, but there are some people that respect that build. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here in the B tier. I've seen that in people's S tiers and I genuinely can't understand why. That Rush Roar, it's a bore. It can be ridden. It's efficient at destroying boulders while mounted. I didn't know that, but that's a fun fact for you. So you could probably run into stone or mine with it a little bit. Probably not as efficient as an Anubis or a Dig Toys even though. The main benefit here is the Rush Roar Pork. Absolutely beautiful meat early game, but very hard to hunt these minions. I don't breed, but I have heard of people breeding for the meats to get a constant supply, but it does seem excessive to me. We're gonna go ahead and put this bad boy a little bit lower on the d there we got nox if you find nox hair in your bedding you should leave it where it lays and leave immediately this thing right here brings nightmares into people ev down trait minion as well when fighting together applies dark damage to the player's attacks beautiful early game skill and very difficult minion to find i will say that so that will affect its score i didn't even use it much it's not bad like it's not the worst but it's definitely not we have so many d's that we're gonna have to figure something out here coming in with that next one we got floodler this minion strongly relates to the katavina it's really not used for anything besides the mining in the early game you can kill some for leather i guess but not too much use to it besides that uh i'm gonna go ahead and toss this at the front of f just because of how useless it is i would say it's not nearly as cool as some of those d abilities partner skill as well tech or did not even know that but cool definitely not the most essential thing we know where most of the ore is in the game Killamari, absolutely gorgeous early game for the movement partner skill why in the team can be summoned to use as a glider this is why it's absolutely gorgeous early game it is a really good glider before you get glow claw it wraps itself around the enemy's head sucking out their insides oh boy for the base it's also really good because of transporting we're gonna go ahead and put this in the c ranks 
and I debate, I mean, it's definitely better than a press, so we'll leave it right here for now, see if it gets moved later on. Coming in next, we got that Mal. It's hard to tell, does not deteriorate even when cut off. We're gonna go ahead and go over the Mal and the Mal Crisp in this one. The Crisp, I don't see as being as good because it gets cooling and... Oh, it is better on this one in particular because it gets an extra skill. Both of these minions, though, are going to be used for the farming of gold early game. So you have plenty of gold, set up a base, put a bunch of farm ranches in it, put a bunch of cats and get stocked up on gold as much as possible. Really good utility because of that. They don't produce as well as Pal Balls, though. So Vixens is still going to be above it right here. Celeray. The Celeray Glider is another glider that you're going to use early game. The only reason I ended up using this one is because I found a shiny. And also, I found three more shinies of this in game. So I genuinely think it spawns in more. There really ain't too much much besides that it is purely just a glider but you are gonna use it because of that so i'm gonna go ahead and bring that one to the c rank as well goes right about there right with the other one that dire how you're gonna be killing these all early game to get your leather you're gonna be hunting them like crazy you gotta get 10 but because of the fact that you can be in max movement and move with this i'm gonna put this so high up on the list because that is how you move your base. That is the meta of movement in this game. Best ability purely because of its partner skill. But no other aspects are good. So it's not going into the S category. We got the good old taco. I absolutely hate catching this one. It explodes. When activated, equips a player and shoots eggs out of its butt. That explode. Beautiful. But I've never used it. I saw a shiny one. But it blew up on me. Or else I'm sure I would have. Probably right about here. No. Because it's not better than the glider. Putting it middle up on the B. A fella loppy and i am going to put this one so high up on the list it's gonna blow your mind as well i did not know this early game and i was griping about this the whole time i hate running to pick up stuff i wish things would just be picked up and the partner skill here is while in the team appears near the player and automatically pick up nearby items it does not fight like the daydream but it picks up the items it's great for farming it's great for mining it's just great to have in the early game and i didn't even use it because i didn't know so i definitely hope this saves you some time and with this video that is just too good of ability but it's not as good as the movement ability so we're gonna put it pretty high up on that a tier but not really max it out mazarina i call this a cow and honestly i've never even looked at the name before Farming produces milk. There is nothing to it besides that, but you need milk. It's just like the chicken with the poultry. I'm gonna go ahead and move the chicken up a list as well. All right, coming in next, we got that Bristola. Saw a shiny one of these. Increases the power of grass pels. Nothing too useful at all, honestly. But you do use it in the base purely because of the medicine production, the gathering, and the planting. Possible drops, wheat and lettuce seeds are absolutely gorgeous though, just to factor that in. Grass is very weak in this game. It seems to get destroyed way too quickly. Even the mammoth is like that. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the... It's definitely a D. Probably going like right about here. Gobfin next. Partner skill when activated. Attacks targeted enemies with a powerful aqua gun. This right here. We look at this and we just think pal fluids. Before the kelp seat, you would go kill hundreds and hundreds of these to gather up pal fluids, blowing them up left and right, which is where all of its value remains. I'm gonna go ahead and put that up here with Daydream, but not above Daydream. I'll give Daydream some respect. Still has a ton of value if you need a bunch of pal fluids quick. As far as battle, not very good. The Ignitus one though, the fire gob fed is not nearly as good and you just get flame organs which you're already getting this one's drastically farther down on the list then is this a useless minion it has kindling too as well as transport so it's not as bad as fox sparks putting it at the back of c kangaroo this is a glider that i did not use in game and don't value it as high as the other gliders this is because it brings you higher while gliding and isn't really for the traveling distance they also got the crisp one the base stats are cool they're really good for the transport too just like the kilomaru the ice one is a little bit better because it has cooling of course i think we'll leave them in the sea because they are gliders with the ice one in front of course i've been realistically could go all the way to d it's just feeling like that kind of play mazanda beautiful minion the first minion you're gonna get with some transport three to really speed things up has level twos across the board can be ridden 
fire, can rapidly fire a grenade launcher while mounted. Why do they not tell us more about these passive skills? That is crazy. Ooh, no one told me that. That could have came in handy in so many actual boss fights. We're going to be bringing this with us. And then, of course, you got the Lux one as well with the same abilities. But you're going to have that electric generator. Because of that, the Lux is going to be a little bit better, in my opinion. And both of these minions are going to go all the way up into B. They are strong minions, great for battle, not too difficult to catch, which actually gives them a higher score. At Wooly Pop, I think that this is a meme, and I have not found any use for cotton candy at all in this game. It's weak, it drops high quality pow oil, that's good. It's 18,000 times sweeter than sugar, so if you take a bite, you're dead. All right, it's definitely, oh, I hate being so rough on the cute thing. <laughs> it really is that bad though caprinti next good old berry pal sometimes drops red berries from its back when assigned to the ranch the farms produce so many red berries with the planting and gathering minions that this minion was not used at all for me definitely another low tier minion that is absolutely garbage i don't know if it's that bad though i mean i'd never used this it's genuinely right there with the cotton candy one i guess they wanted some ranch minions he got melpaca which Produces wool in the ranch is better than the lamb ball, but I'm only saying that because of this passive skill where you can ride it. And that makes it pretty good early game. It is going to be one of the first mounts that you get in game. It's the first wool one that honestly, because of the fact that you can ride it, it's like a C. But it's not as valuable as getting like pal balls from the ranch or Catavania or even a glider. Going about right there though, real respectable spot. That Elty deer. We got a deer. You're gonna be using this early game a ton. With the saddest backstory in history, you're gonna need to make this guy slam its head into those trees for you. He's debatably better than Vixie. No. He's not, he's right before it. Once you get him, you're not having to go on woodcutting trips anymore, which is absolutely huge. You can also be rounded and do the double jump. Increases efficiency of cutting trees. I didn't even know that. That's not bad to bring with you either. And then we're coming in with the Terra one, which I did not get till absolutely ridiculously late game. And it's the same exact stats. For how hard that was to catch with its only habitat being one of the sanctuaries, we're definitely gonna have to put this lower on the list. Be useful though, but you're just not getting it in time for it to matter coming in with that nightwing next it carries newborn pals to his nest and raise them as a surrogate parent absolutely a beautiful minion the first flying mount you're gonna get absolutely gorgeous really hard to take out early game this bad boy right here is debatably a, a tier it really is it changes the game it opens it up but i tell you when you compare it to ragnahawk or jet rag and speed that bad boy is slow rib bunny partner skill y and team increases the power of neutral attacks neutral is really bad so that's nothing too beneficial Y at the base increases work efficiency if working at a weapons workbench that is way too niche to affect too much i've never had much interest in this pal it does not do anything that the other pals don't already do for you the beautiful flower drop is good but it's definitely a F tier. And Chris is still the worst one. It's still better than that. Coming in next, we got Incineram. Partner skill, when activated, attacks targeted enemies with a powerful Hellfire Claw. This bad boy right here really is special. Really hard to catch. So by the time you get it, these stats mean nothing. And it's also a pain in the butt to catch. Because of that, this is honestly an F tier minion. And I know it has higher stats than some of the other F tiers, but there's just no use for it by the time you can catch it. I think the lowest level one on the map is level 30. And, and why are you needing those stats at level 30? But it will be a very high F tier because of its power. Very good in fight. Oh, we also got the dark one, which I caught very late game. It loses the kindling and it's extremely hard to catch only at sanctuaries. That is even worse it's still good in fighting so it's hard to put it low but you would expect a minion this late game to be good at fighting all right right there right there feels right coming in with that cinemoth cinemoth has two planting and one medical production when activated attacks targets enemies with a poisonous fog i've never used much of this minion grass is not too powerful never used that ability 
complaining to medicine production really isn't too much this is definitely another f tier i'm trying to think about that positioning i know this is brutal especially with like a level two ability but nobody is using this minion our socks kindle in level two so it's absolutely gorgeous for the base i would say it reminds me of a boar rush it can be ridden and keeps the rider warm in cold environments really not too much value at all but it is the first kindling two you're gonna get putting it ahead of fox sparks but I wouldn't put it too high up on the list. Kindling 2 right here as well. Yeah, it's honestly just right ahead of Fox Bar. Dunmud is absolutely useless. You might use it for some mining in the early game. Assigns how quali high quality pow oil when assigned to the ranch. That is new. That was not there before. It was useless before that. Now it actually has some use. That's actually really good and the only source of that in the game. It's going to put it up here with the ranch minions, honestly. And because of how rare that resource is, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a B ranking. But the back of B, of course. Krognikto. When activated, attacks targeted enemies with a phantom peck. Lumbering one. Oh my god. I don't even need to say too much about this minion, do I? It's hard to catch because you only can catch it at night. No stats whatsoever. It's worse. I prefer having Ice one than Lumbering one. It's truly the worst thing available. Coming in next, we got that Liz Punk and Liz Punk Ignis. We got the fire on the Ignis, so the Ignis is a little bit better. These bad boys have high value because with the sixth sense, they can sense nearby dungeons. They also drop silver keys and copper keys for you while you're slugging them. And because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and put them as a B tier. They are better than pecking, but not nearly as good as the movement three minions. Loop Moon. Passive skill. When activated, attacks targets enemies with powerful jumping claws. Just another fighter with no base abilities. Two movement. A little bit better than these, but you're not getting any value from this and it's not powerful enough to use in a fight. Galel Claw. Essential for every team. It's the fastest glider in the game and you can shoot with it. Without a new glider coming out, Every person will be running this. Even with no work suitability, this is a main minion. This is definitely easily S tier. Every single POW trainer will have one of these. And it's on their team because you need that glider until they come out with a better glider. You can shoot with it and it's the fastest, hands down, required for the game. Easy. I remember I hit a shiny one and didn't catch it. It was the most heartbreaking thing that's ever happened to me. I hear the shiny ones are faster, but I don't know if I believe it. I don't know if it's a myth or if it's true. I haven't timed it all technical, you know? Robin Quill. This is the beautiful early game minion that you're going to get a ton of value out of. But the Terra edition is more of a late game minion that's too late to get any value out of. So it's definitely going to be worse on the Terra edition side of this. But the regular one, I will say, is definitely a B tier minion. Once you get to the late game, they lose all their value, so it's not going to be any higher than that. And it's definitely not above the Dunmut Pow Oils. If you did manage to catch a Terra early, it'd be good. But I don't. I did not go to the desert that early at all. And I don't think they're in the lower level desert. Coming in with that Gorat, another just heavy hitter. Transport 3, though. It definitely has useful work suitability so it's not going to be on the bottom of this list it could go to the top of d just a powerhouse if you catch one mid game you could use it for a little bit nothing too crazy though transport three is huge always help for the for the base especially if you ain't got it yet coming in with that b guard next produces honey when assigned to the ranch makes it extremely important it's a servant that pledges loyalty to Elizabeth, which is the annoying part because it blows up and it would be so low on this list if you didn't need honey for cake so because of that it's going right up here with dunmark super important ranch minion and the elizabeth side of things the, the elizabeth's awful the stats are just like robin quill so you're really not getting too much benefit the bee guard because of the honey gives it the benefit so we're gonna go ahead and move that one farther down on the list but it has so much power uh, it's honestly a d that is really far apart not really expecting that one but seems like it should be the situation rintel can be ridden enhances neutral attacks when mounted gathering to high quality pal oil you catch this because you have to and you're definitely not riding it you're gonna go all the way down here with these powerhouses that don't do much else besides be powerhouses and the thing is is it's not a powerhouse oh man it can be ridden so it's better than that one Oh, that's, a, that's far down there. Coming in with that sweet, absolutely gorgeous minion, but you're never going to use it because you get the sweep up. 
and the Sweepa is a huge upgrade from the Sui. If you put the Sui's with the Sweepa because of the partner skill, you get way more benefit. Still, not going to be used much, just like adding a dark minion to increase your other dark minion's powers with the who, 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 who thing right here. I don't think that's an ability you're going to be using too much. Go ahead and put that on the back of D. And then Sweepa, beautiful early game powerhouse. I'm going to go ahead and give him a B rank. He really is so strong just for a billion that can destroy anything it sees. Ice is super powerful. Chill it, something I did not use much of, but it does have the dragon ability, which is great for fighting darks, I found out. And it applies dragon damage to the player's attack when mounted, which is huge, I didn't even know that. It can be ridden, it's good for the water. Ain't too much to it, but it got some value, and it's a good fighter. The dragon attack to player's damage is huge. I'm gonna put that right behind Sweepa. First alpha, you really fight in game. UV Vault, you got ge electric generation two, so it's your first electric generation two you're normally gonna get in game. It can be ridden and apply electric damage to attacks. It's considered the Thunder God, and it looks super cool. Honestly, I did not use much of this minion, but I debatably bring it up to C. It does not have much use though, so put it right about here. A little, it's better than Melpaca, that's for sure. Good evening, we got Fox Sixel which i didn't even know about this passive either but this puts sui at a whole new low level it's definitely above sui got level two cooling but there's really not much u utilization to this whatsoever it's definitely c or d oh it's a it's a it's a it's a d it's above sui though and it has power it's better than that gob fin but it's not as good as eliza b right there perfect position and bang that just that baby bang like that film <laughs> coming in next on the list we got good old pyron pyron's another one of those minions that you're not getting till mid game in the volcano debatably too useless at that point it's going to give you that extra fire damage but it's not really doing much than the frost one we just looked at so i'm gonna put it right there with it honestly i can appreciate fire damage more than ice and the fact that it has lumber in puts it a little bit higher on the list with the dark one it is a little bit better dark moves are better in this game they do seem to only counter neutral which you would think would be bad but considering their only weakness is dragon they actually come through uh not as good as the b though coming in next on the list we got ring Drix, lumbering two and cooling two keeps rider cool in harsh environments very rare ability there i would not tier it higher than false sickle but because of the ability that keeps you cool possibly good enough to get it into the c rank but not good enough for a b yeah i could stand by that i could stand by that let's put that bad boy not as good as those c's not as important as gliders but maybe right about there Never used it myself, but would have if I knew about that passive. The Lumbering 2 also isn't that bad. Coming in next, we got Rayhound. Can be ridden and double jumps while mounted to electricity. This bad boy right here is no different than the one you get early game uh, right here by Milpaka. If anything, it's lower than that one because of the fact that this is in the desert area. Higher levels, harder to catch. We got Kit Sun. Kit Sun can unaffected by the cold or heat while riding this pal. That is crazy. Yet again, I did not even get this minion because it's a nighttime minion on the ice island that's really high up, ice island, mountain, whatever you want to call it. Extremely hard to get, so it was one of the last ones I got in game. But that ability right there is huge for emergencies or anything early game. I definitely wish I would have called it. It's not even that high of a level. I just was not aware it was there. Because of that ability and how unique it is, I'm definitely going to put it up on this list. It's not as good as the gliders, though. It's going to go right about there. Dazny. This minion right here, I didn't get till mid-game either. While in team, appears near the player, follows up player attacks with lightning bolts. Okay, so why Daydream is so high up on the list? Why would this not be just as high on the list? I didn't even know that this could do this. The abilities don't really matter as much. I guess it could not have some power to it, but I didn't even know that was an ability. I will put this here. It is just as valuable as Daydream, but Daydream's early game, and honestly, I didn't get one of these till mid game where it could be useless by then. Lunaris coming in with those heavy hidden minions again. Absolutely beautiful. While in the team, can improve the weight capacity. It improves it by 80 exactly. 
absolutely gorgeous. Used this early game myself a ton. Debatably an A tier. Honestly, that's a beautiful ability that you're going to want. Either that or King Pekka for it. They're all great. I like this one more personally because of the handiwork. It's great to have on the team if you need to get them tasked done quick. Dino Blossom can be written and enhances grass attacks while mounted. It is not used for that whatsoever. It has two planting and two lumbering, so it is an upgraded from the deer that beats his head into the tree in comparison. And it also doesn't get depressed because of that. So you got the deer here. You got these. Honestly, the electric, they're, they're, I'm going to put them up in the B rank. At the back, of course, though. Better than chill it. Better than chill it. And the electricity one is debatably on the same level. I wish I could stack them, to be fair. Electricity one got the same abilities, just electric two instead of planting. But the planting does come in clutch because you need that in the base. So you'll actually be using that. Coming in next, we got that serpent. Can be ridden to travel on water while mounted. Prevents stamina depletion while moving over water. I did not know that. That could have happened in the old update, but that is absolutely crazy. That is what I should have used on the outside of the map. You can just run the whole time with it. I wonder how fast it is in water. Only level two watering though, so nothing too crazy. Definitely a noticeable ability though. I didn't even know that. We'll toss that one up here on A. Nah, we'll give it a B, but we'll also, it's not as good as a glider. Right about there. That Serpent Terra that recently got a buff that it can care when you're carrying ores, it's gonna decrease the amount of them in your inventory, which is beautiful for mining run trips. Because of that, it is upgraded past that one, but definitely close to it. I don't think that that's gonna be used much. Maybe some mid game, but it's hard to catch until mid game. So you're not gonna have any opportunity. You would use it early game if that was an option. Marianth looks like something from some other game. Can't put my finger on it though. Extremely hard to catch really bad stats can be ridden who cares this definitely is a rough minion these are in the 40s in the wild with nothing appealing whatsoever besides darkest stats it's definitely going in the d ranks so we got that beautiful dig toys his ability drill crusher mines him like crazy if you're mining yourself he's necessary in every base but he's not as good as some of the other mining minions so we'll go ahead and give him a strong A, but at the back of A. We got Tom back coming on in. Beautiful for the base with gathering, transporting, and mining. It can sense nearby pals, and it never sleeps, so it works all through the night. Debatably an A tier for the early game as well. Right up there with Dig Toys. I am a big fan of Tom Bat, but the difficulty to catch honestly moves this to B tier. These are so hard to find early game when you need them. And then they're so potent late game for no reason. Low Vander. Haven't looked at this minion much. Partner skill while fighting together grants the player to steal life. That's huge. I didn't even know this passive was so crazy. I didn't even use it much. Very good in the base, though. Very good stat. It's better than a chill it. I put it right up there. Sure, why not? Flam Bell. This is exactly why I have so many flame organs that I don't even know what to do with. Beautiful minion early game to get them so you can stock up on fire arrows or anything else. Does the kindling work, so it's better than your good old fox sparks. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that into the C rankings up here with the owl balls, but not nearly as good. I would debate it being better than gold though, because there's other means to farming the gold. Coming in with that van worm next, can be ridden, but I didn't ride it much because it wasn't too fast. Transportation three though is huge for the base. And you got the van worm Chris with the transportation three cooling too. Same things going on here. Increase damages while hitting the player's weak point. Because it's a flying minion and has that value to it, but it's not a very good flyer. But the movement three is really good. But the gliders are probably better. I'm going to put them right here and put the ice one in front of it. Give it a good old C tier. Bushy, as far as looks go, one of my favorite pals. Looks like he's floating even. He doesn't even have legs. When activated, targets the enemies, hits them with a powerful attack. We would not have used this minion much because, I mean, it looks cool, but it's not the strongest fighter. But that lumbering three makes it an absolute legend. I'm going to go ahead and toss that into A rank. Ain't no doubt about it. Not as good as Dig Toys, though, because it is difficult to catch and more towards the middle game. Beacon next. Absolutely love this minion because you can put your electricity in a funny spot and you can always fly to it. You can fly to him, but he's not that fast. And he has that transport in three. Another A rank minion that I put in almost all my bases until I get the electricity four. 
or even some electricity threes. But it's a really good one to have just in case you're running out of electricity. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here right above Tomcat. That feels more in place. Ragnarok coming in. Best mid game flying mount. Kindling three. Transportation three. Coming in clutch, but definitely not S tier. Such important to the game though and really opens up the world for you. High A tier, no doubt about that. Gives you that fire damage when flying too, which is really good for that extra power. Catris next. While fighting together, neutral prowls drop more items. Did not even know about that, but great for the base because of the handiwork, the transportation, and the medical production. Not many minions have medical production, so it definitely adds on to its effect. Let's go ahead and toss it in a strong C because we did not use it too much and it's not too good for fighting and somewhat difficult to catch. Not as good as the gliders, better than these. Yeah, right about here, good spot. But now we're coming in with that Wixen, which is a minion you want for the base because of the handiwork three, fastest one you're gonna get until Anubis. And you got the Kindlin, so you ain't got to worry about a Kindlin minion anymore. A tier, easy, debatably better than Dig Toys, but not better than those. Love that minion, and it gives you that fire damage when you're fighting together. And it's a fighter, beautiful to bring on trips. Probably not much stronger than Bushy though. Coming in with that Burn Dash, which I think is the Wixen Grass form, increases the player's movement speed while fighting together. I didn't even know that was ability. Another great partner skill I missed, and beautiful abilities for the bases two level threes the problem with this minion is you truly don't get it until super late game unless you go fight the alpha i think it's only on the islands and it's extremely hard to get i'm gonna go ahead and rank this bad boy it's strong it's strong it's a but it's not high a and i like the woodcutting guy more so we're gonna leave it right there but they're probably about even i wouldn't put it over dig toys valette while fighting together, ground pals drop more items. Did not even know about that. Definitely a good effect. Good to know those effects like that for when you're hunting those items from those types of minions. Got medical production level three though, which puts it in a category where you definitely will use it sometimes when you need that medicine. Medicine production in this game is absolutely brutal. Not as good as the gliders. Coming right here, honestly, with the Catavania. Coming in next, we got Sibilex. Didn't get this mini until extremely late, but with great reason. Produces high quality pal oil when attacked to the branch and has fighting capabilities, medical production and cooling as well. And definitely an A tier minion. I can honestly say I don't have it in any of my bases because I have so many resources already. But if you need high quality pal oil, I should have got one of those earlier. I think I just waited longer and did regular and crafted it up to the high quality cloth, not pal oil, sorry. All right, coming in next, we got Elfadran. Beautiful dragon to add to the collection, but sadly, it is not useful at all. Your dark pals drop more items when defeated. There's also a water Elfadran that has watering over lumbering i do not have that one unlocked considering you only can get it from breeding which already puts it lower on the list the fact that it can drop more dark items while you have this minion that's good but it's not anything that's going to bring it up considering everything else is useless i think we're going to end up putting this bad boy down here better than this dang horse looking thing though and the dark one's cool but you have to breed it so it's honestly worse to me can't find that thing around the map at all kelpsy which would have been an absolute f tier garbage but now it makes pal fluids when assigned to the ranch pretty self-explanatory you got done mud with how high quality pal oil Kelpsy's gonna go right next to that bad boy. And we cannot forget about the Kelpsy Ignis as well. This one right here gives you flame morgans when assigned to the ranch. You're gonna be using the flame bell whenever you're gonna want that. This one right here, a little bit later game, hard to get. Easy to hatch from eggs, but we're not really considering that here. We wanna capture them. So this bad boy going in that D tier and for those work suit abilities, it's gotta go in the D tier. That Ezerobe, y'all know my fight with this where I couldn't aim on it whatsoever. Really hard to hit the worm creatures. It applies water damage when attack and you can ride on it. Level three watering is huge for the base. Instead of needing two level twos, you can get one level three and it do just as much work. Absolutely gorgeous. Gonna go ahead and be another B tier. A little bit better than chill it, but not as good as those. I definitely will put it over low vander because I didn't even use that minion. Bryolix, bad boy right here. Farming ice organs all day. You kill these in the wild to get your ice organs because I'm not positive that there's something in the game yet that you can put ice organs in the base. Unless you're buying them from merchants, there isn't a good way, which I'm sure they'll change later on just like they did with pal fluids in the ranch. It's got cool in three and lumber in two, not a fighter. 
not gonna do much dragon pals drop more that's good but this bad boy is gonna die if you bring it around any dragons coming in with a c tier and i'm thinking about where to place it here better than the serpent not as good as the gliders better than the medicine production that spot right there just loves getting taken all right coming in next we got that blaze how and that blaze how knocked absolute heavy hitters dark on the blaze how knocked a little bit bonus with that fire and they got the lumber in and kindle and same stats on both these are a tier minions strong good for the team but you do pass them up quick once you get to the oh i mean b tier sorry once you get to that late game, they become absolutely useless. They just don't have enough power to upkeep with the big dogs. I would say not as strong as Sweepa is early game either. And the dark one's better. I'm honestly going to move them down past those two. These are so good early game for woodcutting and their abilities. That Relaxaurus next and that Relaxaurus Lux. Absolutely the same things, but the Lux has electric three and the regular has water and two. Now the Lux is going to be hugely better because of that the first electric three that you'll debatably get in the game go on and go ahead and toss that up in the bees as well but definitely better than chill it definitely better than the fighters gonna hold back right here on that sweep up but definitely better than the woodcutters the regular red leg source hard as mess to catch early game and you want it in early game it's gonna be right here with this b nothing too crazy but it's not too hard to catch so it is a little bit higher up on the list i did not factor in that you can ride them and shoot a missile launcher i honestly forgot about it because i was so excited to unlock the missile launcher at a point I threw it and the damage is just not there. For some reason, the missiles don't do nearly as much damage as Jet Dragon's missiles. I don't know what it is. Fix it, Power World. It's a missile. Put the same explosives in it. Bond Cherry, which is a minion you can use just like King Packa to get max weight. And it has Planting 3. We also got Bond Cherry Aqua, which same max weight rules. And you got Watering 3 on it. Two beautiful minions for the mid game. Gonna be high b tiers right next to that watering three right there that's where it's going because of that weight difference and i definitely did use that going a little bit higher up that weight difference is huge if you ain't got king packa you just grab one of those real easy i was shocked how late i got king packa pelt a lily next planting three when activated uses medical flowers to restore his players health i didn't even know that was an ability yet again great base settings though we always tossed one of these in the base late game but now that we know that it can restore health there's some new builds that i didn't even consider with this strong fighter for sure above chill it above these but not above the water three b rank for that one rep tyro coming in my favorite mining minion before the level fours of course you got the kindle on level three and the mining level three beautiful essential was way better than dig twice before the nerf and you got the cooling version in case you need a fridge in that base as well absolutely gorgeous minion we're gonna go ahead and toss it above dig toys in the a rank better than wixen better not as good as nightwing but definitely better they go like this honestly because this one would go between the ice is not nearly as good as the fire because in your mining base you're going to want to be firing coming in with that king pack of next the hundred movement for the early game that i didn't even consider when i was playing and the chris king pack of. same abilities on both but you got cooling three on the chris making it even better king pack is already an a tier minion high a tier no low a tier b tier high b tier but that ice feature is going to be a little bit more back purely because it is so hard to catch this minion. I think it's only an alpha pal and it's in a cave out in the open 40 plus very hard to catch. But that ability makes it worth it. And that's why I didn't move it into the C ranks. Not bad, though, for the weights. And you're basically going to be using King Packa for that weight. Coming in next, we got that Mammawaris. Mammoth. Mammawaris. That bad boy right there not used in the base whatsoever ridiculously hard to catch and then once you got it its defense isn't even that good for late game those stats right there you have put on plenty of other minions you're not riding this because it's so slow it's honestly gonna be the back of c tier really cool minion still the chris version i will admit more of a fan but also harder to get so it doesn't really go anywhere with the ranking it's crazy how popular this minion is early game you absolutely love it you want it so bad and you get it and it's just a letdown coming in with that wampo next got that level four transportation and the first one you're gonna get 
absolutely required for the base needed you got wampo botan as well the other stats are good and just extra and they bring your max weighing capacity to 120 which i didn't even know about till recently these minions right here are s tier no doubt about it or the top of a tier but nah we're going s tier with them transportation for is just huge you're gonna have this minion in every base and i feel like that's really what gives it that s tier and you can do either one it doesn't matter we got war set coming in late game fine but it does have lumbering three and transportation three it increases the player's defense and reduces the damage received by fire beautiful abilities that i had no clue about it's gonna be a b tier how high up on the b tier though nah it's right here above these blaze house be purely because of that ability but it's definitely nothing to write home about fangalope bad boy has the double jump while mounted and can be ridden i hear people run through dungeons with these mid games beautiful but besides that no use at all gonna put it in the c tiers because of that not bad not bad phil fenelope coming in with that fell bat next metal school production three which is the only reason you'd ever pull it out you're not using this fighting or any other thing it does grant life effects whenever you have it on the team which i did not know about at all beautiful effect i don't even know how that works too much considering these minions this is the only reason they're valued and i never used it because of that i didn't even see it the partner skills are just hidden way too drastically i'll give it the bottom of b it has that medicine production so you do bring it out sometimes this is pretty easy to catch not too hard to get we got that quivern the mid game mount before ragnarok that comes in clutch and is absolutely gorgeous for the base definitely an a tier easy said it's gonna be better than dig toys better than reptaro but not as good as nightwing is in that early game but next on the list we got the crazy blazemuth coming in with the legendary assault golden schematics can be ridden enhances fire attacks it's good for fighting but when you're this late game you're not using this for fighting the mining level four for the base though having mining level four s tier ain't no questions asked next in line we got that hell surfer <laughs> oh, i didn't think it'd be so bad saying these before i got into this can be ridden as a flying mount a plant applies dark damage to attacks it looks super cool it's actually requited for some of the breedings so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a C, but it's really not that impressive and you're not gonna be using it in any fights. I'm gonna put it above the mammoth though. Astagon, level four mining. All it is is a miner and it's the most clutch miner in the game. You ride it, you destroy all the rocks around you. Better than Blazemuth even. Movement four, I value more than the mining, truly. Movement four is so important whenever you get it. Mining three can be okay. Coming in with that mess thing, super hard to catch. Got an alpha pal and then on the sanctuaries. Level three mining though, didn't even know that. And it increases the player's defense and electric pals drop more. A lot of cool abilities, but not much respect given to this minion. But I will put it at the bottom of B because of that. I definitely have some respect for it after seeing all those abilities. Didn't even know about them. Number 100, Anubis. Level four handiwork everybody needs one on the team everybody needs 10 on the team you gotta get anubis a better than movement no doubt about that absolutely gorgeous easy call these good ones easy calls level four watering jolt mud tide level four kindling jolt tide ignis gonna go ahead and put those in a as i mean s as well the watering just gets all the watering done all you need is one firing he gets it done so much quicker than any other firing method it is beautiful coming in next we got suzanku which the alpha form is what drops the legendary assault shotgun schematics can be ridden and fly in and has fire attacks while flown this is not really something you're gonna do with this minion way too late game way too glass cannon not going to be used whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and put it in a low C because of that. Right by these mammoths. A little bit stronger than the mammoths, I will admit. And they can fly, so it would go above. The Aqua Edition, I stand on the same cause. It's way too late game. It's just not going to get much work done. Wa water is better than fire in this case, though. Grizzbolt, extremely hard minion to get in the face of the game. Why is the texture not loading in on his belly? Is that just how he looks? I guess he just looks like that. Can be ridden. Can fire a minigun while mounted. Wow, Power World. You really need to tell me more about these, because I would have done that if I'd known. He's going up high on the list just because he's the face of Power World. 
And now that I know about that ability, which I did not know about before, I think I'll put him at the back of A. He got electric three, he got good stats, movement three, good minion to have on the base. We got Lily Lin, ridiculous minion to catch, ridiculously late game and difficult to catch, but beautiful to have on the team because of that level four planting. If a minion has a level floor, they're S tier. There ain't no doubt about that for this list. Now, you have the Noct Edition, which is not nearly as good, just as hard as it get, only has an alpha form, not worth it whatsoever. The Noct Edition, I'm gonna knock drastically down on the list, probably to the C tier. It's not even gonna be used for fighting. And planting, of course, is gonna be on the far S tier side. Oh, this is such a bad minion, I'm going to D tier. It's kind of like the Liza B, honestly. Better than Relaxaurus as far as power, but you're just not going to ever use that that late game. Still a beautiful minion, though. Felaris, a beautiful bird. My favorite one in the game, and Ice Pals drop more when you got it. It's a tower boss as well. It's only on a sanctuary, though, so the ability to catch is next to nothing. It's nothing like Ragnarok, where you end up getting a couple of them along the way. I only ended up getting one of these extremely late game, and I had Jet Ragon by then, so there's no way I'm riding it. I don't know if it's faster than Ragnarok. Because of that, I am going to toss it into the B ranks. It would be an A if you could get it in any feasible amount of time. And then it flies. If it's probably the same speed as Ragnarok, it's definitely higher up on this list. Right about there. That, that look, too, got to mean something. It looks really good. Oh, Zerk coming in with that while fighting together. Water Palace dropped more items. Didn't even know, but it has level four electricity. So crucial in the game. Not more important than mining, but just as important as, honestly, mining. Let's move this. Movement, there we go, and electricity. All those level fours, though, S tier immediately. Everybody has them. Everybody has them on the team. These pals are high commodity on the world. Shadow B can be flown, looks super cool, is extremely powerful, has some crazy drops, but besides that, there is nothing to it, and you're not using this late game. You're not using this to fight things, and it has no work suitability in the base. Because of that, it's like the Leyland Knot or the Relaxaurus. It is cooler than the Liza B though, so I'd give it the top place on good old D. You got Paladeus, which is triple jump while mounted. Nothing good for the base, but this is your fighter. You toss this on your team, you dungeon run with this on your team. Triple jump comes in clutch better than any other jump in the game. S tier easy, and that power of those ice moves is ridiculous. Now you come to Necromus, can double jump, can be ridden through dungeons, but that power compared to Paladeus is absolutely ridiculous. The power is there, and it's because of Dark and Paladeus is neutral. That's a better S tier. Yet again, though, no abilities in the base. You're just going to want these as your fighter. You want one or the other. I personally run both. Coming in next, we got Frost Stallion and Frost Stallion Knocked. Cooling level four, which puts them in S tier, but you're really not going to be using it for that. This is a fighter, a cooler. It enhances your ice attacks and can be flown. This is a top tier minion like no other. It is just as good as Glowclaw. I would stack them up if possible. Everybody needs one of these on the team, but Glowclaw is confirmed on the team. You also got the Noct Edition. Gonna be more powerful. Nothing wrong with that. Put the dark on there. Love it. You gotta breed it though, which is, you know, I'm not the biggest fan, so I'll put it below one. And then last but not least, we got Jet Ragon. The missile launcher comes in clutch, the fastest mount in the game, and by far, number one on the list. Absolutely gorgeous minion, carries you in new ways, opens the map up like you've never seen. Work suitability is horrendous, but that doesn't even matter when he's winning every single battle for you. And that's going to do it for the tier list this evening with Pal World and Rillavet. Appreciate you so much if you tuned in till the end. If you see anything I could do different since I am a new YouTuber, please comment down below and please subscribe if you want to see later content.